Hello everyone and welcome to the Indigenous Voice. Today is October the 4th and in the first subject we have today it's about language which is one of the most important matters and we have with us today Christine Paul and Ivy Seward both are teachers and working on the Sanchotin language to be specific here. Welcome to the show and thanks a lot for coming and to tell us a little bit about your work. We'll start with Christine, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in working on language? Well, I, I started writing the language in two, two, 2003. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it was so important for me is, it, is when we're in residential school, they tried very hard for us to forget our language. And there were beatings and straps. They'd strap our hands or we, we went without food. Like when I was mealtime, we'd get sent up to the dormitory until everybody was finished eating. Then we had to go back downstairs and do prayers with the, the nuns that were looking after us. But we had to speak very quietly if we needed to talk about our language. But my sister and I got caught talking Indian and she, she doesn't remember what happened to her, but I do, because I had to stand there and watch her get beat by the nuns. They strapped her with a really thick belt and it was double and I just kept hitting her like that. and. I, I, they made me just stand there and watch. They didn't touch me. They, I just had to stand there and watch her get beat up. So I, for me, the language is really, really important. And I'm, I'm so happy that, that we're finally doing something and, and getting it documented. And, and when I first started working for, um, in 2003, um, we had an elder work with us, Ray Sam who has now passed away and he he really taught us a lot. He taught us a lot of the old words that, that have been forgotten and mm -hmm. we use them again. And I used to drive him back. I'd pick him up and then drive him to our language day and then, then I'd drive him back home again. And he'd never stop teaching even when we were riding back, bringing him home. He says, I'm going to give you a test. And so he'd give me a few words and he says, you have to tell me tomorrow what I said to you. <laughs> but by the time the next day rolled around, I already forgot. <laughs> but he was, oh, he had so much knowledge in his, in his whole body. He just knew everything. Just, we were so sad when we lost him. And we've had different people coming in that have helped us with the language and it's it's coming along pretty good but not fast enough for Tom <laughs> he wants us to do so much in one one day because we only have two hours a day mm -hmm. like four hours a week and we do as much as we can mm -hmm. so that's that's all I have to say for now there is a lot of talk about, but uh, mm -hmm. Ivy, uh, would you tell us a little bit also about yourself? Mm -hmm. um, it, in 1991 and 1992 is when I first started the um, St. Charlton Immersion Instructors Training Program. Um, and it was a two-year program, and as soon as I got out of there, um, I began working as a St. Chalton teacher at the Hleong Tribal School with John Elliott and his sister Linda Elliott. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for a few years. Um, um, I took a two-year break. I thought I wanted to do something else. Um, but I came back home to Hsetnich, to Sanich, and I began working at Bayside Middle School, School District 63, teaching Sanchathan and then I joined to add on to that job I joined Tom and Tom Sampson Christy Paul um, we started documenting the Sanchathan with other elders that would come in and 
to me, it, what it means to me is it's the world to me. It's been my passion all of my life. Just knowing um, what our people have gone through. Our Um, believe me, we, my, my, ba originally I I have a degree as a linguistic as, mm. well in the, but in Arabic and from Syria, so I know very well when we talk about language. It's mm -hmm. language is not just yeah. words to communicate with other. It's mm -hmm. identity. It's a way of life. It's, mm -hmm. it's a logic. It's everything and. I'm sometimes really I'm so upset with the oh, media around here and mm -hmm. mainstream media when they talk about what happened to indigenous people as only as a culture genocide. Mm -hmm. When you destroy somebody's language and stealing their land and rob everything, this is not the culture. This is genocide, period. Mm -hmm. I, it's kind of, so I know how that, I mean, I know how that is so sensitive to you when you go back and think Here. about mm -hmm. all these issues. But you know what you are doing? I mean, it is one of the most important things. And I want to know why the school 63 started the program of Sanchotan language in the school? Um, from what I've learned is that um, some of the um, community members of the Khusaynich people stepped forward and um, told them that they would really like our language taught in the school. Um, and then finally there was that movement to bring it into Bayside Middle School, whereas um, another elder, um, Helen Jack, was hired on to teach there. Mm -hmm. But she retired and that's when I stepped in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it kind of a little bit uh, weird does not come from the school itself, especially when you're talking about school. I mean, school know about the the mm -hmm. importance of language, the importance of education. Mm -hmm. So it's for the parents to go and ask about, mm -hmm. would you please teach the Sanchotan language? I mean, mm -hmm. kind of a little bit uh, tell you something. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine, I'm coming back to talk about the language. You said you went to the residential school, but you were having some knowledge of your own language before going there. Is that correct? Yeah, we, <coughs> well, we never did forget the language. Mm -hmm. we, we always after we, we got used to the rest of the girls that were there um, and then they were always speaking the language but we just had to be really careful we just mm -hmm. had to make sure we couldn't hear the, those rosary beads around walking around because they used to have heavy heavy beads on their their outfits and we always knew when they were coming out I don't know what happened why my sister and I didn't hear them it was really, really sad there. Actually, my brother and I wanted to go somewhere together because we never ever left our home. Like mm -hmm. we never went to Vict came to Victoria or traveled anywhere. So when the idea of going to the boarding school came up, we thought it was might be fun and to be in a different place. Place. Oh, it was so terrible. My, my, I don't know why my brother got beat up, but he got hit so hard with the belt that it cut his skin right to the bone. He still got that long scar there. So we couldn't even go visit each other. Like we weren't allowed to talk to each other, only if we were in a classroom. But even then I was very strict. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm really happy that we're doing the language because we can actually talk to each other now. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, like I knew the Sanchothan language as a little kid, my, my great grandmother and her daughter and her, his, her son-in-law always spoke Sanchothan. So we kind of knew, knew it from when we were children. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> but I always spoke Hulkaminum with my great grandmother. Mm -hmm. I I used to travel with her on a canoe up up the not the river um, 
you know, where Bergdorf Bay is, the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd go up there and we'd go up the mountain getting medicine and, <coughs> excuse me, medicine and, um, because uh, we, when we're, after we went to back down to the beach where we live, we'd, we'd be collecting wood because we didn't have any wood to burn in our um, wood stove that we had to keep our heat, heating warm or heat up our whole house. Mm -hmm. We lived in a small house with her until my dad built his house. But it was, it was terrible at the boarding school. One day, on Easter Sunday, we were only allowed to eat eggs once a year, and that was on Easter Sunday. Everybody got one egg. But I don't know how come I got sent to the dormitory. I wasn't allowed to eat that day. Terrible, I don't know. I don't know what I did or somebody that just picked it out, I guess. I even got called to the, somebody got down to the rec room where we're all sitting around talking and they came and got me and told me I had to go up to the, the priest's room. And um, I heard, hadn't heard about all the other stuff that used to go on there, but you know, I, all I remember is walking into the room and him giving me an, ugly smile, and he was going like this to me. That's all I remember. I don't remember what he said, what he did. I don't remember walking back out the door and going back downstairs again. That's totally blanket out of my memory. And I'm glad your memory hold on on the important stuff, and mm -hmm. because what you are doing now is really what matter now, especially. Mm -hmm. It's this language is still there. The people who of the land who speak the language is still there, and it's a matter of time to come back and get hold back on their identity, as they as uh, as they want to. Now talking about the actual world we and the actual uh, uh, work we have here. Like I have a couple examples of names, like for example, of the, uh, days of the week and a family. Like we have one picture here about family, uh, and I would like if you, uh, Ivy, if mm -hmm. you would like to explain a little bit uh, about the language, which, which one, and how the way you say it. Okay, mm -hmm. so this one, Shueli, Shualakwa. That one is written in the Dave Elliot alphabet. Uh -huh. That is used at the Lewong Tribal School. That from where I first started learning how to write mm -hmm. and uh, improving my speech. And this is the international phonetics, it's the same word, but just in a different, uh. different alphabet that the uni Victoria, uh, University of Victoria uses. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, so, and why the uh, University of Victoria doesn't follow the uh, kind of the, the way like the native community here? You they use both, uh -huh. but this one is their main one that okay. they, they use, yeah. And we have here for mother. Tain. And it's, as we see, Tain. Mm -hmm. And in the first one here, next, the first writing, it is what you say, how you say it in English, and this is here in the sun shortened al uh, alphabet. Um, we have dad, <laughs> which is men. Oh, wow, okay, that is a close <laughs> one. Main. Kind of. Main. 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 Yeah, a little okay. different from And me. baby, we have, or bo uh, b baby, so it's which is? Cack. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, baby boy, we have here it. Swaika. Swaika, baby girl, Sleni, Sleni, Sklin, mm -hmm. Sklin, and ah, sorry about that. And ah, okay, spouse, which is Stalis, 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 mm -hmm. and grandparent. 
Sila. Sila. Yeah. Sila. Sila. Okay. So I see it's in Halkamitnam too. I see. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's in both our uh, we okay. have our Halkamitnam language too, which uh -huh. is the couch and on up to um, Snanemoch. Okay. Nanaimo. Okay. Yeah. So where are you in the process of documenting these words and like uh, are you in the process of doing a dictionary? Oh, uh, we'd like to get that far one day. Mm -hmm. We uh, one of the secretaries we had did start one, but she didn't know the language, so it was it was really hard for her to really really get into it and mm -hmm. complete it. So uh, we still we'll still have to work on that someday soon. Okay. I hope uh, it's hard to it's hard to put our language in alphabetical order because mm -hmm. the words are there's so many different ways of saying the word and then all the little signs that go along with it. Mm -hmm. It's we I think we'd have to do the English. And then the, the native language after, but that's something we have to discuss yet. Mm. Okay. So. Mm. so, how do you see IV like the youth, for example? Do they realize how important this matter, and are they enjoy? I mean, do you know schooling sometimes come with kids try to avoid to go to school or try to do <laughs> the homework? Mm. But there, are they enjoying about? learning their native language and uh, uh, hmm? oh yeah they're starting to really enjoy it because now there's a bit of a movement now where we're uh, looking at teaching more so outdoors rather than just in the classroom where we'll go to places like our traditional f um, fishing territory and we have um, our representative, his name's Joe Seward, who teaches us how to make the mm -hmm. the spears, so we can go spear fishing at Goldstream. And then we have another community member who will come in and um, teach our children how to clean the salmon. And then, then we spend we camp at the school, and then we smoke the salmon. So we're following our tradition mm -hmm. at the school district and. They really do enjoy that, and it also uh, empowers them. It makes it allows them to feel like, yes, I can, yes, I do belong here in mm -hmm. this school. Mm -hmm. So it's really empowering for them, and I, I really appreciate that um, the school district is really coming along that far mm -hmm. there at Bayside School. Yeah. And how? What do you think about that as well? What do you see the new generation? and how they are reacting to coming back and kind of planting again that language. And well, when, when I used to go up to the school, uh, I used to bring the crafts up to the children mm -hmm. and we'd get people who were really good at doing beading or sewing or carving, um, doing the fried bread, I think everybody enjoyed the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The kids used to, I could hear them talking to each other and and sometimes <laughs> one of the parents would get there she you know we can't even say anything to the kids and they correct us. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the parents as well need to participate in these classes because you don't need it's not only a school issue it's inside the home the most important thing this mm -hmm. is where most of your time you spend especially when you're a kid mm -hmm. yeah. yeah the kids really love it they love the crafts but i won't be going there this year okay they're they're getting more different things are happening so they're going to be doing that okay. this year but it seemed like from both answer here, like language again, it's not a separate issue. It's connected to way of life. It, when you learn about language, you go out to the environment, the where sur the surrounding where you survive, about how you c about how you live as a community, mm -hmm. about the kind of work. It's so it's not only language again. Mm -hmm. So, and um, any. Uh, now for, again, we talked about the dictionary as an important issue, mm -hmm. but any other plan you think you are going to do in, in, in the process of documenting this and shorten language? 
Do you have a plan? Uh, a plan? Uh -huh. Beside the like, regular day work we have, like, is there a new project and or are you completely busy what you do already? Well, we are really busy with just just the language mm -hmm. and and our teacher sometimes we don't even get words written because he's teaching us so many other things that that we as women don't know mm -hmm. but he's taught us so much he's such a good teacher but, but it's we all know it's so very important and I don't know I guess there's not enough money to to yeah. to get mm -hmm. more people to come in and, and help us get things done and like we need so much like we need a, a camera and uh what else computer <laughs> oh a computer in the room where we are and mm -hmm. so um right and now uh we do the writing Tom's, Tom does the teaching, mm -hmm. and we do the writing, and then I put it on the computer. So I work behind them after everything is said. It's done. a big, big, big job, and we have only three people carrying on on that work. Mm -hmm. So I can't see, I mean, how... But I, it's, again, that people need more involvement, and I wish if the UVIC... I mean, I hear sometimes from Elder Tom that the way it's been teach in UVIC, it's a little bit not that the way you usually teach in in, in, the, in the real environment. Mm -hmm. So I wish would be more involvement of a UVIC university to come and ask the ex expert about it because it's you are the expert of the language, not the uh, not the academic who teach. You. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Oh, I forgot what I could tell you about the language. That, oh, oh the, some of the linguists, but mostly down in the states, the, the ones that are the real linguists, they um, they try to change the way our words are spelt, mm -hmm. but you can't change it. You can't mm -hmm. change a word because mm -hmm. it would get pronounced different, and the kids wouldn't be learning it the way they should be. Some kids find it difficult to, but they're learning. They're some, the what was that old class you were in? The oh, anyway, the little little kids are learning a lot mm -hmm. at at the tribal school. Tribal <coughs> school, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, so do you do anything? Also work with the? Do you work along with the tribal school as well? Like it was John Elliot there. Uh, um, no, I work with them. Uh -huh. I used to work with them John, quite, quite a few John, years uh -huh. ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he was one of my first teachers, along with my late, my late dad. Mm -hmm. So I worked with a lot of elders in the past. And fortunate to be still with Christy and Tom Sampson, yet who are really the backbone for me. Um, that helps me keep going, especially after losing my late father because my late father was a St. Jonathan teacher at Kleongok Tribal School too. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so he worked with John as well? Yes, yes. And late Earl Claxton Sr. Mm -hmm. I would love, uh, I visit more than two or three times John and I ask him to come on the show because I know very well how important the work he does Definitely, and yeah. um, hopefully next uh, next show will be here mm -hmm. and but mm -hmm. uh, I know he's he, the, you are overwhelmed uh, all of you mm -hmm. and I want to just say thanks a lot for coming today on the show to, mm -hmm. to talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully in the future we'll have more uh, more talk about it and actually like a dictionary in a place that'd be great. That'd <laughs> what be do great. you think Christine? <laughs> thank you for having us here uh, it's my duty actually thank you for giving us this your time thank you ivy mm -hmm. and thank you christine mm -hmm. and thanks for watching salalia 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 <laughs> salalia your native name yes tell Tolkelama. Tolkelama. Tolkelama mm -hmm. and Salaria. Mm -hmm. Tolkelama and Salaria. Tolkelama. Tolkelama. No, no. <laughs>
Tall Pela Mart. Tall Pela Mart. <laughs> and Solalia. Thanks again, and <laughs> thanks everyone to, for watching the Smart Indigenous Voice. And I'm almost home, too late, we're stolen from homes, kidnapped from families, I'm looking for answers to why your God can't stand me, I'm only eight, mind frame is too small to comprehend the word hate, I'm so innocent, I swear this has to be a mistake, so I'm led to believe in your organized religion, so God wants you to molest little native children, family separated, children molested and abused, and this is stuff that you'll never hear on the news, how they stole my ancestors' future from the reservation, and us kids sent to boarding school isolation I'm so lonely, what message is the creator trying to send? I'm so cold, so lonely without a friend Sitting in this white man's world, doing my best to blend Children sent to a world of hurt, what a destination Key word for the government was assimilation Canada's true history has yet to be told So me and the kids wrote the song so the truth will unfold much humiliation for so many nations It's time to re-educate the new generation The past was hard, but the future's for the kids The way of my people is how I'm gonna live So much humiliation for so many nations It's time to re-educate the new generation The past was hard, but the future's for the kids The way of my people is how I'm gonna live I'm growing older now, forgetting my tradition Got locked in a closet cause a nun said I'd never listen I was hurting many times from the priest and nun Spoke my language the last time cause it stuck a needle through my tongue I never did nothing, I never started trouble So why's my backside always seeing a belt buckle? We were kidnapped, slapped, separated and hated Every day I was called a dirty little native Why am I called a savage? Why am I treated like a beast? I'm just a young child that forgot the word peace I wanna run away from this residence School, Cause every day it's destroying my mental views On family trust God but most of all love It feels like no one answers me when I look above But I made it, I got to see my grandchildren go This stuff's been bottled too long And I think the world should know that we're still alive They'll never destroy our spirit I hope you don't just listen to this song I want you to feel it Cause we were here in the beginning We'll be here till the end So thank you for listening I mean hi Much humiliation for so many nations It's time to read Educate the new generation The past was hard, but the future's for the kids The way of my people is how I'm gonna live So much humiliation for so many nations It's time to re-educate the new generation The past was hard, but the future's for the kids The way of my people is how I'm gonna live Welcome back to the second part of Indigenous Voice. Uh, first, I would like to thank the volunteers and Shasta who make this show possible. And as you saw first, we went through a, a song called Re-Educate. And we have with us uh, Brian Samson Hello. from uh, the Red uh, Paint, the, the town red. red. Yeah. Hi, Brian. Hi. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and the band. Well, about well, myself, good. I'm uh, born and raised Victoria, Brentwood Bay, Startlip Reservation. Uh, our group consists of four of us. There's myself, Tommy Paul, a.k.a. Barn Dog. We have Adelaide Elliott. You might know John Elliott. That's his mm -hmm. daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, Serge. He's, um, he goes by DJ Goldman. He, I, I can't say his last name. He's Armenian, raised in Lebanon. I don't want to get his Whoa, last okay. name wrong. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So Serge, DJ Goldman. Good mm -hmm. guy. Nice. Okay, and when the group started? Um, I guess, really, we started taking it serious. Um, well, I couldn't even say it was then. Like, um, I started uh, doing uh, open mics, battle raps, and stuff. Like, when that all really started taking off in the early 2000s, and actually, Barndog and myself went into this club one night, 
it was like a random Tuesday night or something. We just went in and had nothing else to do. Um, so we went into this club and they had a, a battle rap night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was like, oh, I'll do it if you do it. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it, right? So we ended up doing that. We ended up going against each other because we were the last two to sign up. And, you know, we made fun of each other. I was a little bit more mean. Everyone reacted a little better. At the end of the night, the guy said, you're really good. Come back next week. So it kind of just snowballed from there. And then um, the uh, end of 2007, I had a, a really good friend of mine. She had bought me studio time as a Christmas present. And um, so we, we went to the studio December. Mm -hmm. um, and then by May, we um, organized our, our very first show with uh, War Party. They're, um, at the time, I believe they're from Hobima. Uh -huh. um, they are actually a, a, a big inspiration to myself and I'm sure Barn Dog as well. Um, we were sitting around watching uh, much music one day and this native group came on on the TV and we we're like, well, you know, mm -hmm. watch the video. I mean, it was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that was, you know, a big inspiration for us that realizing that, you know, this branch could go out a little further and, and, and native people have got their foot in the door. So. That. Um, before I ask why uh, rap and hip hop close to the indigenous, like for indigenous person, will be more interested in this kind of form of music than others, mainly because the social issues talking about because the justice matters and and yeah. uh, revolutionary. But before talking to that, which is a very big subject, why you call the band uh, Paint the Town Red? Well, Paint the Town Red, the name originally started, uh, like, you know, we weren't really ready to, like, you know, have a name, uh, you know, um, we just went by Yellow Wolf and Barn Dog. Mm -hmm. And so I started uh, these shows, like when I had War Party, I called the event Paint the Town Red, you know, double meaning, you know, people say, oh, we're going to paint the town red tonight. Mm -hmm. But to us, you know, we're painting it red, meaning us as our native color, you know. Mm -hmm. So reclaiming. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, uh, right? Yeah. So it's not it's nothing gang related or anything like that either. People have asked me those questions. Uh, no, I and don't stuff. know. I, uh, by the way, my mind never went there. Yeah, I know, but exactly. some, some people uh, do though. Some people ask really? well, what okay. is the meaning behind behind the red? And I was like, I mean, no, like red people or the red people of this planet. That's Obviously the first thing we come to my mind to bring back the original color of this place. Yeah, exactly. This guy. Okay, okay, yeah. good. So now talking about hip hop and justice. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, hip hop, you know, for us, you know, um, I, I, music's always been a big part of my life. Uh, from when I was a little kid listening to my mom's records and my uncles. Mm -hmm. My uncles would have, sneak me in their room so I could listen to the heavy metal stuff. Uh -huh. You know, and I'd have my fist going with them and everything. And mm -hmm. So music's always been a big part of my life. And then as I got a little bit older, I got into the powwow trail. Um, my late uncle started our, our family drum group. And... Um, for me, that was kind of my eye-opening that like, I like being in front of an audience because um, we were hired, I think I was in grade 9 or 10 at the time, um, to perform at my high school. Mm -hmm. And I, I was nervous as hell, right? Like, I was like, you know. But uh, after getting up there and speaking in front of all my peers and stuff and, and the reaction that we got, and they did a write-up about me in the paper, the school paper, and I was like, yeah, this is, this is something I could probably do one day. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of it for me. And then as far as the hip hop goes and how we got into that, like, you know, it was just so relatable. I mean, as a young, you know, as we were young, we didn't really listen to like the full message, right? Like we, we liked the beats, you know, we, we heard the swear words and mm -hmm. thought that was cool, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, as, you know, we got older and the music started evolving, mm -hmm. you start listening to more of the message. And I think that's why so many people of color you know, pover poverty poverty stricken mm -hmm. people relate to it because you know the, the, this is a, you know a big group of people telling their story of how by any means necessary you know they're going to provide for their families they're going to let the police and government know how they feel and and that was just so relatable for us right mm -hmm. so and mm -hmm. and and now here we are yeah uh, nicely put. Now I have here a few questions for you. It's uh, now, where do you call for the band? Now, when you, where where do you call home? Where do we call home? Oh, we consider Victoria home. I mean, Brentwood, mm -hmm. Sartlip. We're all from Sartlip, mm -hmm. aside from Serge. Mm -hmm. um, so we call Sartlip home, as you can see on my hat. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then Victoria obviously is home for us as well. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I was back and forth as a child from you know, town to back there and back and then back again. And as I got a little bit older, moved out on my own, lived downtown. So Victoria, Brentwood, Sartlip, that's home. Okay. Uh, did you work with um, any artists, kind of uh, well-known? Well, yeah, we, we have like a big thank you, you know, to, uh, uh, he goes by degree one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also Marshall A, um, you know, he, Marshall's been great to us. He's, um, you know, he brings all the big acts and, you know, like from Akon to TI to Tech 9 who are opening for on Friday night. You know, it, it's countless, uh, D DMS Entertainment is what he, mm -hmm. his company is. And um, he's been great to us. Yes. Uh, like very fortunate, like, cause you know, there's, there's so many uh, of us, like, rappers in in this city and we were just fortunate to give him the chance by a degree um this group backed out one night uh, just before a show and called us sent me a message and said hey uh, would you guys like to open and this is after you know a couple of years like hey man you know so and so is coming to town we'd love to be a part of it mm -hmm. and we're like, oh yeah we'll think about it you know right <laughs> so you know we were given that opportunity to um open up for uh heavy metal kings mm -hmm. um and so we, we just we took the chance we you know didn't really listen to their music too much but we didn't care it, w it was our shot and we took it and it's been on ever since nice okay tell me more about the support also from the community or friends and family. oh I, you know it, it's it's growing and growing like you know um obviously uh, our parents you know they come to almost every show my mom i think she's only missed like two shows and we've as you mentioned they were the reason why you went through all that <laughs> yeah and um you know we get lots of support from like local businesses and stuff mm -hmm. uh my friend Jesse Barnes, he's uh, started a successful uh, taco business, and he's a great guy. He uh, actually, I randomly met him the first time we opened up for Tech Nine. I was uh, at this T-shirt shop getting shirts made, and mm -hmm. he kind of heard me telling my story to the guy at the shop, and he just kind of did one of the, oh, "Hey, come over here, let's talk." Uh -huh. And so, yeah, he, he's a good guy, and so we've been friends ever since. And then, uh, <clears throat> uh, who else? Geez, there's so many. <clears throat> Um, Silas Stone, he's uh, new to the promoting scene. The past mm -hmm. year or so, he's you know really taken on on the lead of being a, a good promoter in this town, mm -hmm. and uh, he's actually helping us get on some shows too. Um, yeah, we got a lot of support. It's nice. growing and growing. Mm -hmm. you know? um, we start the show first by seeing Reeducate. Yes. It's a very important song, I think. It's spoken about sensitive and important subject, residential school. Tell us why, what behind that song? Why you thought this is important to do? Well, Reeducate was actually uh, one of the first songs, like an actual song that I had ever wrote. I, I didn't know anything of like song structure or anything. I, I, I just found this instrumental beat online. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what I was using at the time. Um, so I used the beat online. Um, I worked with the Hleilnuk Tribal School. Mm -hmm. It was the grade nine class at the time. And their year end project was about residential schools. Um, so they had caught wind of what I was doing in town with the open mics and the battle rapping and stuff. So the teachers approached me, asked me if I would be a part of this project that the kids were doing. So I said, yeah, sure. So the kids, you know, they wrote their little uh, rhymes on a paper with a picture underneath. I think the grade fives drew the pictures, the grade nines wrote the words. So I just kind of took their ideas, took little bits from here and there, and um, you know, I meshed it into the song and you saw what it became. Mm -hmm. And then the beat on that, like that, that song is so old, like, like, like that. It just, you know, I just recorded it and made a video for it a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. And that was uh, by my friend Chef, his name is Zach Eves. He uh, runs Starboard Media. We linked up with him, and um, yeah, we, we shot a good video. And I mean, this is like, you know, this is all out of our own pocket. This is, you know, this is no financial support anywhere. This is all our hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, any extra money we get, it goes into the group. Mm -hmm. Plus, you are not talking about something for fun or anything. You're having a message there. Um, you said you want to. Uh, there is a plan to continue work on the same song, but now a second part of it. Yeah, we've had this idea for a while, like, um, 
like barn dog it was barn dog's idea it was like you know we should do a follow-up to re-educate so we've kind of like had this idea for a couple of years now after the success of re-educate and you know the attention that it got um to do another um song to it but mm -hmm. more of the aspect like when we when i wrote re-educate i put myself you know in an elder's shoes you know mm -hmm. you know that was kind of telling the story you know actually you are telling the story of an elder who was yeah. later in the end because like his you see the end, like you know i got to see my grandchildren go, yes right? exactly <clears throat> so that's kind of how i wrote that um so this one that we're going to do now is going to be in the um you know the child that's stuck in the school mm -hmm. uh you know it's gonna we, we're thinking of calling it letter letters never sent home mm -hmm. so we're gonna touch on the base of you know the child you know writing you know to home and telling their story of what they've witnessed being there so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the thing is like a lot of people you know they don't think residential schools happen i mean there's people that live on this continent that don't even think there's indians anymore you know uh -huh. so actually, actually they don't know actually why it's happened in the first place yeah they condemn it some of them now but they don't really condemn the system behind it as if it's residential school suddenly and ideas fall from the sky yeah. and we got and to get, over, go it, get yeah. over it you no know? it's a system i hate hearing found that. <laughs> that residential school as a solution to the to the indigenous question here i mean yeah. because they want to get rid of the indigenous people culture language and everything well, so if you robbed your neighbor would you want to live next to him um, probably not <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, so again it's um, you tell me what do you think i mean the whole story of the the sad this not sad the criminal chapter called residential school why do you think it's heaven well i think you know like after the unsuccessful attempt of you know ridding us completely off the planet mm -hmm. you know there was no other option to you know mm -hmm. beat kill murder rape the indian out of all of us so i think that's why um it's such a touchy subject for everyone because you know this goes back to the generation before me like it's not even that long ago where a lot of this was still happening i think the last residential school closed in 1996 uh-huh uh -huh. so you know it, it's not that long ago right <clears throat> i mean i'm sure 1996 wasn't as bad as it was in you know 1955 but, but whole, it, mm -hmm. i'm sure some of those elements were still there uh, exactly the the mindset was still who behind residential school is still alive yeah that we don't need them to grow as a native yeah. or remember their rules or language and yeah yeah and um, being a rubber i think you kind of cross a lot of lines uh, you you are as an artist yeah like uh, i mean you know i never really and i and i and i don't i don't say i have fans i don't you know mm -hmm. i i'm no different than anybody in my community i'm no different than anybody in the mm -hmm. city i'm just a guy that loves performing I love writing music. I love listening to beats. Shout out to Wonder Keys. He's the main. He's the guy that makes all our beats. And you <clears> could <throat> say you have a fan. Actually, I. I mean, and recently I started listening to what you're doing, and uh, you like I am remedy. a fan. <laughs> so you, I don't know why you say you don't have a fan. I mean, yeah, I, it's just like one of those things. Like you know, like it's just so cliche. I, I like always done my best to stay away from like douchey cliche rapper things, right? Like you know, like. It just you know it's been done we don't need to see any more of it you know what i mean i don't need to ride around in a benz and have girls running around in my videos you mm -hmm, know mm. you know well, we shot some videos and you know it's not like we ever said oh there's some pretty girls we should hire them for like, these are just my friends you know they've all you know mm -hmm. it's like i'm gonna throw a party shoot a video you guys come over you know like i've never done douchey stuff is what i call uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of uh, a bit kind of weird, revolutionary thing through a party, kind of. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, well, like you mean, like cause that's what everyone says. Like, yes. like there's so many different aspects to like our music because the effect you later. will you will listen to reeducate, effect, exactly, and then you'll listen to the song West Coastin, where you know mm -hmm. it's a party song, it's exactly. a party yeah. video, it's it's one of the, like a, a favorite in the city, like. And, you know, it was but still talk also about dignity, still talk about issue yeah, and yeah. struggle, not only yeah, about... Yeah, because there's a line, because everyone always laughs, like we always get, especially when we perform, you know, in a, a native populated audience, that there's this one line that I say is like, my little homie couldn't get into the club with a status card. You know, it's like uh -huh. a little jab, right? Like, um, but we always get a good reaction from that line because uh -huh. it's true. Like, 
you know, we we can't go out and use our status cards to get into some places, wow, okay. which, which is stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's, you have a lot of fuel. I think you live in a system where racism is still around. Where I mean, the issue of indigenous people it's completely obvious. So that I'm sure will fuel you a lot about to bring things and talk about. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. I mean, like there, there there's times you I have like pages and pages and notes in my phone where don't throw know. them by the way yeah yeah no i know <laughs> you come back always yeah again yeah today. yeah mm -hmm. so, so and th there's times that i get angry there's times where I, I watch things on tv or see things on the news or see things in my community that are done to our people for no reason so you know that fuels a lot of it and i think uh for what i've been trying to do and building our our brand as a group is to not touch on all those political things right away because you know the way i look at it like if i was a listener i wouldn't want to listen to you know joe joe rapper like telling me his views on politics, politics stuff, uh -huh. right? directly so i want i want our voices to be heard first mm -hmm. you know whether you can relate to a song like re-educate or create to the remedy or mm -hmm. you know get wild mm -hmm. you know someone's gonna some some line in one of those songs is going to catch your ear and you're going to start listening mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i don't i don't want to just come out and say oh you know what i'm going to shove all this native pride and na like you know native politics and you know because mm -hmm. people aren't going to listen right away mm -hmm. that's how i feel anyways mm -hmm. you know like i've i've seen you know so many um people you know uh, my peers in the music scene that that are first nations rappers and you know they're kind of starting like how we did you know mm -hmm. like doing heavy beats party music touching on subjects here and there and then you know where they have enough collective ears they're gonna they're, they're dropping some some real stuff on people right now like mm -hmm. joey styles has been on the scene for a while doing that um my friend jesus he is an amazing talent and you know he's just part of um this um Sorry, his name's Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas. Mm -hmm. He uh, did this, um, I can't remember the name of the group that they went by. He's going to kill me for that. <laughs> but um, they, they just won an MTV award for, yeah, for that song. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Like the native voice is being heard more and more. So mm -hmm. I just hope we get to be a part of it. And by the way, I completely agree with you about, I mean, sometimes, sometime, not all, you know, everything relative. I mean, sometimes you have to, s to say a direct things a clear message yeah but that does not work all not, the not time not always no yeah. it doesn't but i mean and especially with first nations people mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. everyone looks at first nations people as we're looking for handouts or you know it's like we just want to tear down the the structure that the old governments had built to keep mm -hmm. us suppressed and kept us down mm -hmm. you know like kind of uh, when you talk about a direct issue it's just for that time it's not yeah. mortal Exactly. does not live forever no uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you know and it's never it's probably never going to stop It'll, okay. it's going to take a great tragedy for the world to realize that we're all humans mm -hmm. yeah. uh, brian tell me more about the band the team the group themselves i mean you well, yeah like uh I, I grew up with um with tommy barn dog mm -hmm. uh we've been best friends for years you know we've done everything together we've lost friends you know we've laughed we've cried we've you know, I, he, I consider him a brother, mm -hmm. you know, and um, Addy, uh, like, totally became a part of the group last year, mm -hmm. uh, and she is an amazing singer, you know, she she's, Great. you know, if mm -hmm. we can't do it, I'm going to make sure I catapult her to do it, because she is so talented, she's coming into her own, she's growing as a performer, you know, and she's a great singer, nice. and, and Serge, we met him a couple of years ago, um, we were on the bill together. We didn't have a DJ at the time. We just kind of went with our, our discs or our USBs. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, yeah, we need a DJ, you know? And we, we, we asked people and people always gas us up like, oh yeah, for sure, yeah, let's do that. And nothing ever panned out. Mm -hmm. So we met him, um, I gave him my thing. I was like, can you DJ for us tonight? And he was kind of like, nah, I don't know. I was like, like, DJ for us tonight. Tell me what you think, we'll talk tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So by the time we were done, he was just like, oh, man, you the guys team. are freaking <laughs> awesome. Like, you know, so mm -hmm. we went and talked to him and uh, in the next couple of days after that show. And um, yeah, we just hit it off. He's, he's such a funny character. My mom loves him. Actually, you know, I 
we have a lot of Armenian of in Syria. Damascus has a lot. If you heard, you know, from history, the Ottoman Empire displaced a lot of Armenians. Yeah, he's he's kind of told me some and of the things. And Lebanon, yeah. Syria, which used to be for a long time part of Syria, the whole region used yeah. to be called Syria. Like a hundred, a hundred thousand of Armenian flew refugee to Syria, yeah. and we have a whole neighborhood of Armenian in Damascus. Yeah. And um, I, I, when you told me about that, I would love to meet the guy, actually. Yeah, well, he'll be here Friday. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Yeah. So what, what the new plan for you? Um, any, any concert? Any? Well, we have a show this Friday. Uh -huh. um, this is going to air after, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, we have a show Friday. Thanks again to Marshall. Uh, we're uh, opening for Tech 9 mm -hmm. uh, Chris Calico and uh, Stevie Stone. They're... Uh, Tech Nine's label, they're the biggest independent selling label in the world. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and he's a, a rapper that I've looked up to since the early 2000s from when I first heard him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's kind of, their, their sound, their performing, their everything is, you know, what I've aspired to be like too, right? So mm -hmm. they, they put on a show. They don't just come out there and sing, you mm -hmm. know, rap and put your hands in the air. Like they, they go out there, their movements are choreographed, mm -hmm. like everything. like. So tell us about, for people to know completely about the details, it's a Friday, where, when, so, yeah, I so mean, at, at what time? So Friday night, uh, it's at District, doors are at 7, mm -hmm. so that's well, October 6th. Uh -huh. Okay. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, doors are at 7, I think we go on at 8, and then the show goes on from there. And then we have another one uh, with my friend Silas, uh, Hustle Life Promotions. Mm -hmm. um, he's got us on a bill October 29th. And that's at Upstairs Cabaret. Mm -hmm. I think the doors are at 8. Don't quote me on that, though. Mm -hmm. This okay. is just the show that just came on. And uh, also, I just got a uh, word uh, email today that uh, this uh, radio station, Six Nations area, mm -hmm. they caught wind of us. I'm probably sure that's a big thanks to Janet Rogers. She's been a great support. Nice. There's one mm -hmm. I almost forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been a great support. So I'm pretty sure she probably put a bug in mm -hmm. someone's ear over there. So they reached out and... Um, yeah, they said they want to do an interview with us. They want us to send us their, our music. They're going to start playing it. So mm -hmm. that's that's a big step for us to get play somewhere so far away. Nice. Okay. I mean, I mean um, uh, Brian, we we'll have left um, uh, one minute for the show. You, anything else? Like you, you have YouTube channel. Is that correct? Where? Yeah, or I do. do you have I, I do. I wish I could change the name. I, I made it so but long. No, but do you have a website or anything or planning for? No, no websites. Nothing like that yet. You know, we're just slowly uh, concentrating on getting the album done. Okay. This has been a long process, mm -hmm. long, expensive, hard, yes. tear wrenching, uh -huh. blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this. You know, we. Uh, we almost we almost quit at one point. So, um, um, I don't think you are a quitter, my friend. No. You are going to. Do, I mean, I'm, I wish you all the luck, and with, and we hope soon we have the whole things wrap up, and we have a new album for yeah. the paint the town red. Yeah. Brian, thanks a lot for yeah. coming on the show. No problem. And we will see you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching this part of Indigenous Voice.